My name is Piyush Kumar Sharma, and this work has been done in collaboration with Devashish and Claudia, in collaboration with KU11, Max Planck, and NIM. <clears throat> yeah. So just to give you a brief background, so when we talk about cryptocurrency systems, their functioning can broadly be divided into you know, two layers. The first layer is the application layer, which deals with you know, generating transactions, mining blocks, and so on. And then there is a network layer, which kind of takes those transactions, broadcasts it to the network, you know, discovers new nodes, and so on. When we talk about anonymity, so we ideally require anonymity in both the layers, right? At the application layer, at the blockchain level, as well as at the network layer, uh, which is a peer-to-peer -peer network level. In this work specifically, I'll be uh, talking about the network layer anonymity of such you know, cryptocurrency systems, where the idea is to uh, trace the transactions back to their source in the network, which is, let's say, the IP address of the transaction that is being seen in the network. right? So when we talk about cryptocurrency systems, Bitcoin is one of the most popular ones, and that is what we use for our analysis. And I'll just give you a brief overview of how uh, the peer-to-peer uh, broadcasting works in this network. So the default mechanism, which was there, you know, before 2015, was that if a node has a, a transaction, it will just broadcast immediately or flood it immediately to its neighbors. And after, you know, uh, maybe a few years, you know, of effort, the current standard in Bitcoin is to diffuse the uh, transactions in the, net in the network, which is to, you know, not transfer each of the transaction uh, immediately, but to, you know, do it after some time. And why they did was because there were some, you know, original attacks that were proposed that kind of tried to, you know, exploit this. But even after diffusion, there has been work which shows that, you know, you can actually trace the source of the diffuser in the network and you can identify who was the pinpoint, who was the actual, you know, uh, originator of the transaction. So uh, because of that, there are new anonymization schemes that have been proposed, which are specifically built for uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer network schemes, and they vary uh, in hop-by-hop -hop routing or source routing, where the basic idea of hop-by-hop -hop routing is that the decision of who should the transaction be transferred to the next hop is taken at each hop, whereas in the source routing schemes, the whole path of what the where the transaction will go is fixed, right? And in hop-by-hop -hop routing schemes, there are Dendeline and Dendeline++, which have been proposed in 17 and 18. And then in, uh, uh, in source routing, we'll be looking at the Lightning Network, which is a currently deployed network and is very widely used. So one thing I forgot to mention in the previous slide is that you know, these schemes, as I said, are inherently different. And there is no kind of framework to know what kind of anonymity these schemes provide. If there are some future schemes that have been proposed, how can we know if they are good with respect to anonymity at the network layer? So the objective of this research was to build a framework which can do this, which is generic enough to you know, quantify the anonymity of any peer-to-peer -peer underlying uh, scheme. And at the same time, we consider an adversary, which is a passive adversary which occupies or which controls some of the nodes in the peer-to-peer -peer network. So given this research goal, so the approach at a high level is that this framework we take as input, the network structure, the routing scheme that's employed by the peer-to-peer -peer routing uh, mechanism, and the observations that are uh, taken from the network, such as the transactions. And what it will output is, for all the transactions that, say, that are seen by the adversary, who are the potential anonymity set, or what is the value of the anonymity set. And how we do th uh, convert this high-level idea into a framework is using Bayesian probabilities, and that is what I'll now define in the subsequent slides. So when we talk about Bayesian framework, we need to define some events. And in this case, let's say if there is you know, any given peer-to-peer -peer graph, the first event is given by PBI, which is the event that a benign node I generates a transaction. Another event is uh, event A, which means that some adversary node, in this case, the red node, receives a transaction. Given these two events, what we are interested to know to model uh, the peer-to-peer -peer networks is PBI given A, which is Given that an adversary node received a transaction, what is the probability that some benign node I generated it? And if you can do this for all I's in the network, all honest nodes, we can uh, kind of uh, know what the anonymity set will be for a particular transaction. And how we can calculate BI given A is with the help of Bayes' theorem. So this PBI can be given by calculating the values on the right side, where PBI is basically the probability of generating a transaction. PA is the probability that an adversary node receives a transaction. And this term PA given BI is the probability that 
given that a benign node i generated a transaction, what is the probability that the transaction will actually reach an adversary? And how can we calculate the values of these individual probabilities? So let's assume the network has n nodes and there are c nodes which are adversarial. And in that case, PBI is considered to be 1 upon n minus c. n minus c is the total number of honest nodes in the network, right? So we assume all nodes are equally likely to generate a transaction. Now, from an anonymity perspective, that is a good thing. But since this is in prior analysis, we assume that any node could have generated a transaction. So PBI will be given by 1 upon n minus c. PA, which is the probability that an adversary node will receive a transaction at all, will be given by this uh, expression, where PBI is the probability of benign node i generating a transaction. And if you multiply that with the probability that the transaction reaches an adversary node, we can calculate PA. And if we sum this for all the individual honest nodes in the network, we can know what is the probability of a transaction reaching an adversary. And then if we kind of take the original formula, PBI given A, there are all these maths. But eventually, it comes down to the uh, expression that you're seeing on the right side, which is PA given BI upon summation K is equal to 1 n minus C. And the essential idea is, if you can calculate this expression, PA given BI for all i, then we can kind of model the you know, probability of each node being the originator. Once we have this all this probability distribution, given a transaction, what is the probability of each node being the originator? We actually calculate entropy over that probability distribution uh, to actually quantify the adversary's certainty about the originator. And we do this for all possible transactions in the network. And just to give a brief sense of entropy, so it is measured in bits. An entropy value of x bits means that there are 2 to the power x number of originators. And if the entropy is 0, that means you can actually pinpoint that who is the actual originator. And it basically means that you can completely denonymize the sender. So now we look at, with this framework in place, how we can use this to actually you know, quantify the anonymity of these individual schemes. So we'll start by hop by hop routing scheme in the form of Dandelion. So the functioning of Dandelion depends on two sets of graph. So first graph is the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer graph, which is already there. But they also uh, create an additional graph, which is called as a privacy subgraph, which, as its name suggests, is the part of the actual peer-to-peer -peer graph, but it covers all the nodes in the network. And there are multiple ways of doing that. Dendelin actually creates a line graph. We'll just see an example of what it looks like. And then once these two graphs are uh, in place, then it works in two phases, the stem phase and the fluff phase which I'll explain now. So in this uh, diagram on the left side, you can see that this is where the stem phase is, where there is a line graph which has been created, which is the privacy subgraph. So if there is a transaction that has been generated by node BI, during the stem phase, it will always uh, be transferred via the same line, right? But the stem phase will convert into the fluff phase based on some probability, which is termed as PF, or the forwarding probability. And in this example, we assume that, let's say, at, uh, the node B uh, subscript J, the probability says that now you should not forward it over the previous subgraph, but you should now uh, uh, send it to the actual Bitcoin network. So it will follow the diffus diffusion process, and then it will send this transaction and broadcast it to the whole network. So in this case, it's important to know that even if the existing attacks, with the existing attacks, you can trace the source of the diffuser, which is B subscript J, but still you will not know who was the actual originator. Right, That is the node BI, which is how they are uh, trying to provide the anonymity. Thus, the anonymity is provided in this stem phase, and that is what we analyze using our framework. So if you can see that the stem phase consisted of this line graph, so we have extracted out that line graph. And now we'll see how we can calculate this PA given BI probability for this line graph. Right. So let's say there is some adversary node. It received a transaction. Now it will start creating you know, probability distribution of who is the actual originator of this transaction. So in this case, if it will say, what is the probability of node 1 being the originator? So for that, it needs to calculate this PA given B1. That what is the probability of the node 1 generated a transaction, and that that transaction will reach an adversary. So in the case of Dandelion, the transaction is always forwarded at least one hop. So that means all the transactions that are generated by 1 will reach A. And that is where the probability is 1 for this uh, node. Right. Similarly, if we consider node 2, the probability will be given by 1 into PF, 1 for forwarding all the transactions to the hop 1, and then it will forward to the next hop with a probability of PF. 
and it will diffuse in the network with a probability of 1 minus PF. And similarly, if we can take node 3, it will be 1 into PF into PF. And if we now have to generalize it for any given benign node i in the network, it will be calculated by multiplying PF hi minus one uh, number of times, where hi is the number of hops between the uh, benign node and the adversary A. So this was the way of normally modeling Dandelion, the but then we also consider some extra information about the routing and how adversaries can collude. So in this case, uh, what can happen is if given this line graph, uh, they can actually create partitions within this line graph. And so in this case, let's say if the node A2 receives a transaction, then it is very likely or it is sure that the originator is one among the nodes one to n. Because if the transaction would have been generated by uh, the node n plus one to m, it would first have been captured by A1, and if they both collude, then they can kind of extract this and they can divide this line into two partitions. If there are multiple adversaries, there can be multiple partitions and the anonymity set can be uh, lowered. <clears throat> so this was about Dandelion. Its successor was Dandelion++. Its functioning is very similar to Dandelion, that it has a stem phase and a fluff phase. But with respect to the privacy subgraph, it is not a line graph, but instead it is a two, uh, four regular graph. That means, so if we consider this to be a sample topology of a Bitcoin graph, then this is what the peer-to-peer -peer graph would look like, that each node has two outgoing potential connections uh, in the previous subgraph. And in this case, now if we have to calculate the probability of, let's say there is an adversary node and there is a node one, what is the probability that this node one generates a transaction and that reaches an adversary A? We'll need to actually consider multiple paths. Because in a, in a line graph, there's just one path from the source to the adversary, but in this case, there can be multiple paths and we can easily do with the help of, uh, uh, you know, so node one will select the probability of half of transferring among two and eight. And similarly, it will uh, 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 forward to four based on the probability PF by two. PF for forwarding and then selecting one by two among, uh, with the probability of one by two among nodes three and four. And similarly, we can do for this path and also the path one, two, three, four, and eight. So in order to generalize this, generalize this for Dandelion++, plus plus, we can calculate this probability PA given BI by multiplying one by two for the first hop and then multiplying PF by two for HI minus one hops, where HI is again the total number of hops between the, uh, the adversary. And we need to do this for all the possible paths from the node to the adversary. Here again, we consider that Apart from this basic modeling, can we do better? So here again, if you'll see that uh, we can combine information from multiple adversaries, if the adversary node A3 receives a transaction, then it is sure that the transaction would have been generated by one among the five to 10 nodes. Because if the transaction was generated by nodes one to four, it would first have been captured by node A1 and A2, and if they collude, then they can very easily identify. And in this case, Again, if A1 and A2 receives a transaction, then their anonymity set is only among those four nodes. Those are the only possible originators. So for the evaluation, we actually you know, uh, involve all these things in the form of a simulator, and then we construct this peer-to-peer -peer, you know, graphs, line graphs, and four regular graphs. We assume you know, adversary nodes, and then we calculate the probability distributions. And then we measure the entropy for those uh, you know, different uh, probability distributions. And then we vary different parameters, the forwarding probability, the fraction of adversary nodes, the size of the network. I'll only be showing the results for the vari variation of uh, adversary nodes in the network. And in this case, we can see that in the case of Dendeline on the x-axis, let's say for a, a colluding node which con controls 15% of the adversaries in the network, the entropy is three bits, which means that there are on an average uh, for 50% of the transactions, the originator are one among eight possible nodes and less. When we move to Dandelion++, since it was a successor, definitely there was a significant improvement with respect to anonymity. But even in this case, if you'll see that if the colluding nodes percentage is 25%, some of the transactions are enjoying high anonymity, but 10% of the transactions can be completely de-anonymized. So this was all about hop hop routing. I'll just now quickly switch to how we actually use this framework to evaluate source routing schemes. In this case, we consider Lightning Network, which is basically an overlay payment channel network over Bitcoin, uh, which provides uh, scalability as well as anonymity to Bitcoin transactions. It uses onion routing to you know forward these transactions such that no middle node has idea of who is the originator or who is the actual you know, uh, recipient of the transaction. And these transactions are performed with something known as channels. Performing transaction through each channel incurs some cost. 
And thus, the idea is to select the best path from the source to the destination based on this cost in this network. And this information about what the network looks like, what is the cost for each hop is public and known to everyone so that they can select their best path. So here again, if we assume this graph, there will be a cost associated with it. For the sake of example, I assume that it's e the cost is you know, equal. And in this case, let's say there is a node one, two, one who wants to send a transaction to node seven, then the path selected will be like this. And similarly, it can be extended for other nodes. In this case, if there's an adversary, it can also calculate these paths because this you know, information is public. And this is what we also exploit and use to calculate the probability distributions for this network. So modeling Lightning Network requires two steps. First step, as I just mentioned, is to calculate the uh, best path for all source destination pairs in the public topology. And this we can, as I said, do because of the knowledge of the graph and the weights. And once we have this, we can use this to calculate the probability distributions. And uh, how we can do that is with the help of this simple formula, which is SPIA upon SPI. What is SPIA? It is the shortest paths, uh, number of shortest paths that originate from some node i and that pass through adversary node a. So in the example on the right hand side, if you'll see, the node one can generate four total four possible transactions. Uh, and it has four possible best paths, but only three of them pass through the adversary A, which is one to A, one to three, and one to four. So in this case, this expression PA given BI will be given by three, divided by total number of paths from I, which is four. So <clears throat> we did this, and again, we considered you know, multiple heuristics or maybe uh, strategies from the routing scheme. I'm only mentioning some of them in the presentation, but there are more, if you are interested, you can uh, refer to them in the paper. So in a source routing scheme, the predecessor and successor of the node actually uh, reveals a lot of information because that is fixed. So in this case, if you consider this specific scenario that, node f that A receives a transaction from node four and it eventually uh, goes to the node eight, then the potential originators can only be among two and four because all of them others have a better path to reach eight, which does not go via A. So if you look at the evaluation of LN, there are, uh, we again followed the same strategy, obtained the public knowledge of the graph, assigned adversary nodes, and you know, calculated the entropy. And then there are you know, multiple strategies. Uh, I'll just be looking at two strategies, which is to select based on, let's say, the high degree nodes in the network. So we select the top 1%, 5%, 10% high degree nodes in the network, and then we see what are the entropy for the transactions. So as you can see in this, when we are considering 1% nodes in the network, in the 2018 topology, which had, which had 1,200 nodes, the BDN entropy is about two bits, which means doubt among four possible originators. But for 25% of the transactions, they can be completely de-anonymized. And we saw that if this trend you know, goes forward for all the you know, years, and in 2021, we can see December, that for 50% of the tra transactions, they can be completely de-anonymized in the current Lightning Network. So to summarize, uh, this work basically deal with uh, creating a generic Bayesian framework, which can be used to uh, measure the anonymity of peer-to-peer -peer network anonymity schemes. It is generic enough that it is not only applicable to Bitcoin-based cryptocurrency schemes, but it can be applied to others as well. And we evaluated three schemes, Dandelion, Dandelion Plus Plus, and Lightning Network. And we kind of, our analysis reveals that uh, most of these schemes do not provide good anonymity. And all the analysis and code is you know, public. And yeah, I am, thank you for listening, and I'll be open to any question. So, thanks for the nice talk. So I was wondering whether the ideas of the hop-to-hop -hop routing that you show for Dandelion and Dandelion++ are used in other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, Monero, or whatnot? Mm -hmm. And if not, whether you have looked at the routing or the peer-to-peer -peer routing that they use in these cryptocurrencies? Yeah, so Dandelion and Dandelion++, they have been implemented in Monero cryptocurrency. And they actually used it and they reached out to us as well after the you know uh, paper. and. Yeah, we have, so with this framework, since we can measure the anonymity, so we also did some stuff of how we can improve this anonymity. In the, in the wake of time, I did not cover that, but we have some suggestions of how we can, you know, maybe balance the uh, routing in a sense that it can, you know, increase the anonymity. Yeah.